Good morning. So two times in a row, I'm really on one uh, this morning. So I was out in the garden a little earlier. Um, you guys may have caught that particular uh, live that, that I did. You didn't see me, but I just showed you some, some of what's going on uh, behind the scenes here. And, you know, some of those areas may have looked kind of, you know, what's going on. But a lot of times when we are growing something, um, things kind of look out of whack before they all come together. And so um, I think last year I showed you guys some parts of my garden and, and all the things. Um, and then I did a, a tour when things had grown out, grown out and they flourished and all of the things. And so I said, well, you know what, let me get a few befores before the plants start doing really well, before I have covered all the ground and, and everything's looking all pretty. Let me um, share um, a little bit of what I, I have going on back here. And so gardening has been amazing uh, for me. And um, there's something really special about putting a seed in the ground and watching it grow. And so many of you have shared, you know, that you have an interest to put a seed in the ground and, and watch it grow. So you see in the title, well, I'm hoping that this is what came up in the title, but changing what you believe so that you can change what you see. Changing what you believe so that you can change what it is that you see. Um, and I'm calling this Paradigm Shifts Part 2 because I've done a, uh, a video on Paradigm Shifts recently. And I was thinking about it this morning after uh, leaving the garden and just how conditioned we've become to the things that we're building and creating in, in our lives <clears throat> and in our business. Say hello in the comments. I see you guys um, coming in. Come have this conversation with me. I think it's, it's one that will um, be very, very fruitful um, for you. You may even get a paradigm shift uh, uh, for the moment anyway, while we're here. I'll be teaching um, heavily on paradigm shifts and manifesting and all the things inside my She Prospers. Those of you who have been sitting on the fence, which way? No. <laughs> so anyway, um, I wanted to talk more about paradigm shifts. I recently was able to purchase a ticket to a sold out event after it had been sold out I and mean, it was something that i decided that i wanted and i wanted it in a particular city anyway that manifested that happened and i connected with about four of my friends and asked them were they interested in meeting me in a specific city where that event is going to be held for a little stay a little girlfriend stay -kay for about three days at the top of 2022. Um, in the process, I called all four, but two of them I kind of spoke to immediately, then the third and the fourth, they all said yes. And they all said yes immediately. Now, mind you, none of them have tickets to this event, but I didn't have a ticket to it either. And it was sold out. So one of the things we're doing is manifest the tickets for them as well. Um, but as I was on the phone with one of my girlfriends, we were kind of catching up as well in the process. And just talking about some different things that we wanted to do. And the subject of RVs came up, you know, the traveling, um, I don't know if you would call it, it's not a bus necessarily, but um, it's a traveling system, traveling vehicle. And um, we were talking about how exciting it would be to just kind of travel around and see different sites, go to museums and um, art museums and all the things. And so oftentimes we don't talk about things that we don't set in motion, right? Uh, I believe that the desires in our heart are placed there by God. I also believe in possibility and expansion and all the things. And so as we're talking, uh, we were thinking maybe we would, you know, take some RV, uh, take some months off and just kind of, you know, maybe travel around in an RV. It was just an idea, but we, you know, put it in motion in, in our hearts. And I laughed. I said, okay, who's going to buy an RV? And my girlfriend says, well, you can actually rent one. 
And so I'm not opposed uh, to, to renting, but I do like to own stuff, right? So we were thinking around 2023 for this particular idea. So that time goes on, we get off the phone and um, a guy came over, a lawn care guy came over to check on uh, the yard. So we put some things down that would burn out all the old weed and everything. The yard was brown and icky looking and it's just starting to come back uh, green at this particular point. You may have seen some of that in the video that I did this morning. Now, mind you, I had a conversation with my girlfriend. We're talking about the RV and, you know, traveling around the world. We set a date and everything, 2023. And the young man that's coming over to check on what was transpiring in the yard, um, he's just very um, informative about so many things. We're having this amazing conversation, like in the middle of the yard. Um, and he starts to talk about RVs, okay? So I don't find it strange. Now, mind you, I hadn't done any research, hadn't looked into it, cost, anything like that. But I'd already told myself that it wasn't something I felt I would be doing this year because I had some big projects um, that um, I'm working on. Now, mind you, because I said that, I hadn't had a chance to start looking at pricing and all the things, but he brings up the conversation. Not only does he bring up the conversation, but he shares that he has an RV um, about him and seven of his friends do little RV trips. They go camping. Now, look, your girl ain't talking about taking the RV to go camping. I like it outside, but I don't want to be with the lions, tigers, and bears, okay? Not that type of outside for me, you know, at this point um, in my life. Our idea was more so um, relaxing, traveling, spending that quality time together, stopping off to amazing restaurants and um art museums and just all the things. So that's our idea of what we want to do as far as the RV is concerned. And then we'll probably stay in some great hotels on our trips while we're doing that. So he's talking about RVs and, you know, so I began asking him about pricing and, and then he says, oh, they can go up to a million dollars. He said, there are a few people I know who have um, RVs that are in the million dollar range where they extend out, <laughs> um, he's like, it's like a laid out house. So why am I sharing this with you all? I completely and fully have experienced and believe to be true, not just for myself, but for you as well, that when we change what we believe, we change what we see. When we get in the frequency and the vibration of what it is that we are desiring, we get clues as to next steps, best practices, and all the things about manifesting those things into our life, whether it's your life um, or your business. And I feel that so many people keep pushing down the desires that are in their heart because they don't fully believe that it's even possible, right? So most people are praying to God for, um, to get approved for a mortgage. But when we step outside of the world's way of doing things, because the world world's way would say, you know, you get a mortgage, you pay for it for 30 years, you end up paying almost double. So maybe like a $300,000 home may cost you five something by the time you pay for it altogether. So we stay so connected and aligned with tradition and the world's way of doing things. And I'm especially for those of you who are believers, Right, because he said we're in the world, but not of the world. So when and at what point do we really align with what God is saying as it relates to our belief? And we start stepping into things that allow us to um, demonstrate supernatural or what seems to be supernatural in our lives because we stepped into a new belief. And so we believe differently and we see differently. So what if our prayers go from, you know, I'm praying to get approved so that I can pay on this house for 30 years, that we start shifting our mindsets because, you know, scripture says he'll give us properties, he'll give us houses we didn't build. So what if we shift our belief into a space of properties that we actually own with no mortgage, right? And see, I know that that's a bit heavy because we've been conditioned that we would pay 30 years, maybe some 15 on our mortgages. But what's needed when you're really wanting to step into a new space of expansion in your life and business is what's called a paradigm shift. 
And a paradigm is what you believe to be true about life, um, how you live it, how it comes forth, how it um, transforms in your life, right? How you get to experience it. That is your particular paradigm. And so whatever your current paradigm is, that is how you are going to set out to do things. We have paradigms with jobs. So we have been taught to go to school, get a degree, get a good job, stay on the job for, until we retire uh, for 30 years, until we're 65, and then begin living this lavish and not so lavish because most people really have to downsize at that point, right? What if we shift? What if we had paradigm shifts that actually allowed us and I'm not talking about allowed us to think thoughts um, and then they're gone again or we're constantly fighting with resistance, right, um, to new paradigms. I'm talking about where we really believe that it was possible for us to um, create the type of income or wealth in shorter amounts of time than what's traditional. What if that happened? What if, and I didn't believe this until things like this started happening for me, what if you made in one week what you would normally make in one month? What if your yearly salary became your monthly salary or your weekly salary? See, when many people hear this, it's so taboo, right? And so their entire life is set up on uh, doing things the traditional way. And they never have the necessary paradigm shifts that will actually allow them to step fully into a space or a realm where they actually begin to attract those things, where they're on that vibration. Because until you change what it is that you believe, right, you will continue to see the same things. You will continue to follow the same trajectory that would allow you to pay off a 30-year mortgage in 30 years. And for most people, that feels depressing when they really think about it. And then if they really get smart and realize that they pay almost double the amount for the mortgage that they have. Now, I believe in the, um, is it Greek? That the word mortgage actually means death certificate, something of that nature I, I've read or, or heard before, right? And so I just want to invite you to step into a new space of possibility a new space of expansion with what you're actually believing. I also want to support you in changing your paradigm shift so that things will manifest in your life quicker, sooner, and faster. See, oftentimes when our paradigms are not in alignment with some of the information we're hearing, it sounds like fluff, it sounds unbelievable, it sounds unrealistic, it sounds really risky, but most of us are risking being normal anyway. <laughs> most of us are risking not fulfilling um, what we really desire in our life anyway. Man, I think that's like a, a major risk. For me, it is, especially when God continues to impart all of these amazing downloads about expansion and possibility and what I can experience and what I can do and who I can help and how I can serve and how I can bless my family and what amazing experiences we can have and how much peace I can have in the process of making it happen. How much grace, ease, and flow I can obtain in the process. Another paradigm that many of us have taken on, this was me years before, was that if it's not hard, it, it's not working, must not be working. So everything has to be hard, right? We also have paradigms about what we consider wealth, right? For some, it's purses and bags and, you know, things of that nature, right? For others, it's property and commas and bank accounts and, you know, being able to donate to causes and things of that nature. See, I believe that we can have all of those things, right? So I have Prada, Gucci, Louis, you know, I have a piece of some of all of those things, right? But it's not where my heart is set or centered on, right? What my heart is set, my heart is set and centered on is greater, right? So imagine if your heart is set on greater, 
then those other things that aren't as costly, it's automatic that you'll be able to do those things, right? So what paradigms have you been operating your life and your business, the, the possibility of your things happening in your life and your business? What paradigm have you been operating off of in this season? What beliefs do you have? What limiting beliefs are keeping you from stepping into um, maybe some of the things that you see other people are doing and, and you may say, oh, that's nice, but that's not me, right? Well, as you think in your heart, that is who you become. And paradigms normally change when we are in environments that we've never been exposed to before. Because some of the things, we just haven't seen it, <laughs> right? We haven't seen it. We don't have any type of instruction for it. So we just pass it off as impossible, right? But when I read scripture, for those of you who are believer, believers, I mean, there's a lot of impossible stuff going on <laughs> in, in scriptures. And Jesus said we would do even greater things than he. And I do come on and talk about wealth a lot. But my prayer is that I am sharing a full circle um, journey of attaining, of obtaining wealth spiritually, tangibly, and well-being, right? Because I learned that, you know, a huge part of my wealth is, is my health as well, when I'm eating, if I'm working out, I don't really work out, I ride bikes. Um, but those are a part of it as well. But I do not, I do not take out the money part because a lot of times, even the way we talk about money, we'll exclude that. But most often when we're excluding that, it's because that's what's not transpiring fully in our lives. And so, so that we are comfortable we just talk as if prosperity doesn't really mean money. But what if it was a full circle of all of them? You, you abounding and, and living in abundance in all of those areas in your life. You being on a trajectory of abundance in all of those areas, your spirituality, tangible, your coin, your cheddar, how, you know, secure in a bag, whatever you, you want to call it, your wealth, and um, spirituality and your well-being. There's a place that happens when you really step into that paradigm of creating wealth in your life where you want every area of your life to uh, exude um, that type of abundance and not for the public, but you want to experience it in your health, right? Your well-being, in your spirituality, emotionally, um, the joy that you're experiencing, your self-care, um, your beliefs, all those things, and then in your money as well. It's, it's a full circle event. So I just wanted to share, guys, Paradigm Shifts Part 2, change what you believe so you can change what you see. For those of you, you still have time. You missed the early offer, but you still have time to join us for the She Prospers. I'm, um, I'm just going all in on helping you to really shift paradigms really shift what you, you're believing and what you are seeing, right? So a lot of times investing on um, the tactical things, we'll do that and have all this stuff sitting to the side or whatever. But if you sit and think about what you actually struggle with the most as it relates to obtaining your goals, your visions, and your dreams, probably 95, 98, 90% or better, let me say that, of your struggle is here right? So how important would it be to invest in getting to a point where you're on the vibration that's really taking you to a space of expansion, a space of possibility beyond what your eyes, your regular eyes can see, where you've changed what you believe so that what you manifest in the natural changes as well. How important is it to invest in your mind? And see, this is a tricky thing about paradigms. Because once we have a paradigm that we most often aren't even aware of, we're, we don't even know that there's a greater paradigm, <laughs> that there's a paradigm outside of what we've been believing for. And so often we're only using like a really small percentage of our brain um, as humans. This is what studies show. Uh, and I want to help you move to the space where much of what you're doing, much of the work that you're putting in is mentally. It's um, 
in you manifesting and stepping into abundance is mentally, right? And then the other percentage is so small, maybe 5% that you're actually doing the work from the space that you've been able to transform your mind mentally and emotionally, right? So for those of you who are joining us and you know that you battle with thoughts, I can't do it, I can't afford it. See, most people are operating their life based on condition. Now y'all don't have to go here with me if you kingdom because we don't live our lives based on condition. I'm not saying that we're out here willy nilly, not saying that at all, right? But I do know that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And some of us simply get new paradigms because we've been exposed to new paradigm possibilities. But how many times do you battle in your mind when an opportunity comes up for you, it's based on a condition? You can only do it based on a condition. And that's how many people are living their lives. Like when I retire, <laughs> like when these 30 years are over and I pay my mortgage off, or I'm not even gonna get a mortgage because I'm not spending 30 years. I mean, what if you didn't have to spend 30 years? Y'all don't hear me. So I invite you, for those of you who really wanna spend in a strong community of women, having fun while we're doing it. I've got some amazing um, wealth building, abundance building, and mindset shifting um, exercises that we're going to do that your whole family is going to see um, the change. And you most definitely are going to see the change. And I'm also believing that many people will manifest um, some things that they've just had sitting during that time, but they'll be able to take this vibe and this frequency with them as they continue to grow and build and, and manifest in their business and in their life, but not from such a masculine energy where it's go, go, go and going hard, um, but more from the feminine space where our creativity lies, where our intuition exists, where we are really listening. We have the, the space and time to really listen up into a space of um, um, explicit trust, right? So that's my take. She prospers.